by far the best new feature of the RS3 right here. You wanna shoot? Ready to go, using it, getting my shots. We gotta go to the next spot. Power down, auto locks. I didn't know I needed auto locks in my life. You're doing the YouTuber thing where your mouth is really... <laughs> The DJI RS3 is the best gimbal of the year. Well done, DJI. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I got the ND you wanted. Oh, I, I just cranked the shutter. It's fine, I don't need it. You can actually, maybe just take it back. I'll just take this down. Oh, by the way, next, next time, just a little bit faster. You know, I know you're the new guy, but just speed it up a little bit. Thanks. Appreciate it. Up until now, I feel like gimbals have just been kind of like working up their basic features to actually work well. Things like payload and how the software works, just the basic features. And I think that we're, we're pretty much there. Gimbals are very good. The only problem is they're kind of cumbersome and hard to use. And DJI is working very hard to make it very easy for us to use. Meet the new RS3 lineup. This is the RS3, which is meant for a little bit smaller cameras, but still very powerful, very capable. This is the RS3 Pro, which is built for a little bit bigger cameras. And DJI is trying a few different things to make it easier for us. The first one is, which when I first heard this, I was like, okay. But when I saw it in action and used it out there, I was like, okay, I understand. This is, just, this is the best feature right here. Check this out. So you're done shooting. Boom. It literally folds in, auto locks. All you have to do is <laughs> fold in your flip LCD screen and you're ready to go to the next spot. And then when you're, when you're at that next spot and you want to start shooting again, It unlocks all of the axes and you're ready to go. So locks aren't new, auto locks, super, super handy. I love that you don't even need to take off the camera or anything. I didn't even think about this really, but changing lenses, you just turn it off, locks all the axes so it's, it's like really stable now. Now I can just go ahead and change the lens here. Get all that dust in the sensor, oh yeah. And now, I mean, I probably should balance it better, probably, but let's see what happens if I just... Wow! This is a big deal, man! <laughs> as long as you're switching like similar lenses, you could probably get away with that and not even have to rebalance or anything, just lock it. If you had a really big camera on here and this needed to be extended further out, it folds it so it's just, it, it doesn't go, tuck it all the way in and so it doesn't kind of like bump up against it. Very smart design. Uh, by far my favorite new feature of the RS3. This will make shooting on gimbals so much faster, so much easier. It's, it honestly sounds like a small thing, but trust me, when you use it, you'll be like, I now understand. Second, the battery handle now comes off. So you have basically just the gimbal part, and this is what I've always envisioned gimbals to be like, where you could kind of take this anywhere, and they have a, like this external battery plate that you can put on here. You could toss this on a car mount, you could toss this on like a bike or something, anywhere you could kind of get this, you can put this now which is really, really great. And then it's just convenient to, you know, you can just charge this by itself instead of having the whole big thing with you. So another nice little add-on. But the bigger deal is really being able to mount this anywhere and everywhere. When it was attached the handle there, like 
you can't really mount this very well, but when it's just this, like the, the possibilities with this are, are endless. And the build quality is really nice. Carbon fiber, super light, super strong. And they made, especially on this RS3 Pro, the, the cradle is huge now. You have a lot of space to mount different cameras. I feel like you have so many options now. And they even give you this massive <laughs> base plate on the RS3 Pro. So again, just more options and balancing, which is usually like really annoying when you're like, ah, oh, it's so close, but I can't because the plate is too small or the cradle is too small. Uh, so yeah, you're not gonna have issues with the RS3 Pro in terms of size. Uh, but you can even mount like a like a C70 on there really easy. FX6 is totally fine. We now have a physical switch for the different gimbal modes. I like that, nice addition. And can I just say, I don't understand why other gimbal companies don't do this. This trigger should do this. It should lock it. And so when you wanna choose where you want kind of the angle to be, you just press the button, let go and you're good to go. Like ah, that. that Every company should be doing that. I've said that for a while. I don't know why other people aren't doing it. We also now have a 1.8 inch touch OLED screen, which is just like so much nicer than any other screen I've seen on a gimbal. The screens are always very, very budget and they're just not very good. This is really nice. And you can even monitor from it, which I found to be like, slightly useful, but also kind of useless. It's really small and like, it's kind of in a spot where you don't really need it. And a lot of cameras have flip LCD screens nowadays, but it's still nice to have. So the build is really nice. And the RS3 basically has the same things except a smaller cradle and less payload and that kind of stuff. But same screen and all of that, um, same auto locking feature, really nice. And then we have accessories. So now we actually get this extra handle straight in the package. Um, and that becomes like a nice briefcase mode handle. So it's really handy to just hold it from there versus always holding it from the bottom. Much more stable, lets you do much more interesting shots. Like I like those really low to the ground shots and, and that is perfect for, we also can buy these extra handles, which gives you kind of like that normal, basic, um, what we're used to kind of side handles. But this is pretty cool. It also folds. So then it becomes more like a, the briefcase handle, which again, really smart. I like this design and you got all of like the mounting options on these. So these would probably be worth it to get if you're using the RS3 Pro a lot. But the biggest accessory literally is the monitor and transmission system from the Ronin 4D. So DJI is actually getting into this whole transmission world of filmmaking, which they haven't really done yet before, but it makes a lot of sense because they have very good transmission technology with their drones and all this stuff. So now they're starting to bring the transmission, being able to see your camera feed to the more consumer friendly, more affordable gimbals. And this monitor is really great. You can see what you're filming, you can control things like focus, and you can even have mirror mode on Sony cameras, which I wasn't able to get it working yet because there's a lot to go through here. But you can control your Sony settings straight from this monitor. That with being able to mount the gimbal anywhere really kind of opens up the possibilities that you can control the gimbal and you can do that whole force move thing where the gimbal moves where you're moving this. I, I think that's gonna really change the game for a lot of people. It's, it's gonna be way more easy than ever to mount a gimbal to a car and then control the whole camera, especially a Sony camera, from this. Did I mention we also have Active Track, which I don't know, I have mixed feelings about. I, I feel like it, it, in theory, it seems like a really great idea, but then when I go to use it, depending on the lens, it, it sort of works, sort of doesn't work. I think at times it could be nice, but it, it still needs some work. But this having another person control the gimbal while somebody else is doing the movement or the, the gimbal's on something else, like a car, and you can just do all the controlling, is very nice. Oh, and on top of that, you know you know I love lasers. They added LiDAR. You can now attach LiDAR to your camera to autofocus your manual focus lenses. So <laughs> this is your, your focus motor here, and this is the LiDAR that you put on top of the camera. 
And with this, you can actually have autofocus on your manual focus lenses, which is like, I don't, if you're just getting into filmmaking, I don't think you quite understand how crazy that is. Like the fact that this is like your follow focus motor, it's not too long ago that the systems were much bigger, way more expensive, like crazy expensive. And then we're using LiDAR to get autofocus on manual focus lenses. And even if you're not using it actually for the autofocus, it's really nice seeing uh, how far things are. So when you're manual focusing, you can like have tack sharp manual focusing, even if you're not the best focus puller because you can see where those different objects are in Z space. That's what this LiDAR gives you. There's a lot here. I did not have enough time at all to test this. They only gave me a few days and I really want to do some more digging because this system seems like an incredible filmmaker's dream. Like for the budget filmmaker who wants to film a really cool short film, music video or anything like that, this system is going to, it's just going to open up like that, that high end filmmaking style to the masses, something that we, you know, us normal people haven't been able to do because it's just not affordable. Oh, actually, I'm going to hold on. Great stunt work, by the way. Thanks, guys. This right here. That's like a legit film set. They're using like they got Technocrane over there. Yeah, this is the stuff that we as your average filmmakers can't quite afford. They're filming Handmaid's Tale. That. That right there, we can't afford. I got a YouTube channel. I got a phone oh, for no, the YouTube no, channel. No, 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 no. My office is right there, so you guys are kind of in my space, so I feel like it's only it's only right that I get to check out the set. I don't you care can about definitely check out I just the set. check out I, I care more about this stuff than I do about <laughs> Well yeah, this is a lot more interesting. This, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just don't take a picture of them. Yeah, I'm not taking any pictures. Yeah, no, it's all good. Security's on me. All right, that's the set. That's the legit stuff. We can't afford that. I got kicked off set. You got kicked off? Yeah, security game. Because we're, you're just a YouTuber. That's what he said. He, he said another one. You can't <laughs> act. You have no skill. No skills. You you don't, you've never been on a set before. That's what I was telling them. Who are you telling? The people. Who's the people? You know, there's people Maddie, watching. that is a Sony camera. <laughs> there's nobody in there. How many times do I have to tell you? Hey, how was the gimbal? Oh my. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool. It's cool, it's red, it's carbon fiber. Yeah, I like that stuff. Siobhan's taking all the NMOs over here. I'm different, guys. <laughs> Flexing on my friends right now. Siobhan, do you use gimbals? Yeah, I do. It auto locks, so like when you're done filming. Right. So then, all closed no up. Yeah, all the locks. So you don't in, uh, need to like click, click, click Yeah, click. you don't need to do any of that. You just, and you can literally leave the camera on there and, and just close it up and then, and then it locks it all up and you're good to go. DJ is ahead of the game. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Can I, can I take it? No. But I appreciate you being on the podcast. Fun talking sure. with you. Yeah, I can't wait to actually see it. And one of my favorite things. NMO, merch. NMO, yo, NMO. You guys will see it in my new videos too. I'll be Heck yeah. Sure. I want to see like a full vi video, full review. Of All right, guys, get ready with me today. <laughs> <laughs> of the NMO t shirt, black.